Uh, just joined the team in December, guys. Extremely excited to be with y'all and uh, introduce our next uh, speaker. And guys, strong roots, guys. It's really special and it's un it's crazy how everyone's lives tie together. Those last two speakers, I interned for Coach Moffitt, uh, and then the Ty Webb was my strength coach, and Ty, Ty learned from Moffitt, and he also worked for Aaron. So it was just like, whoa. So. Um, this next speaker, speaker, guys, I would be up here for 45 minutes talking about all the accolades that he's, uh, he's done. He's worked with professional sports teams, Power 5 colleges, high schools, Olympic medalists, first rounders, UFC champions, uh, and every um, armed force you can think of, guys. He was a U.S. bobsledder. He's got more books than I can name right now, guys. And so I'm really excited. Um, I've been sitting down with him, getting to know him. He was actually, um, I brought up a coach that I, we, they mutually knew. I was like, yeah, this is my mentor. And as well, yeah, I kind of mentored her. And I'm like, geez. I was like, it just goes on and on and on. So, um, guys, I'm really excited. He's going to bring the heat, be locked in, be ready to go. He's going to bring us right into uh, our break and open gym. It's going to be awesome. So give a round for uh, Martin Rooney. All right. Now, guys, I know I've heard so much about Summer Strong and uh, how we're supposed to address the big elephants in the room, right? And uh, so we're going to go deep real fast with the, probably the biggest elephant in the room right now. And that is, I know what you're thinking. You are thinking, what the hell has Martin Rooney done to his hair? What, that, what, is it, what is this beard? What is this new look? Has he lost his mind? But uh, the answer is no. And actually, the person I have to blame for it, it's Bert, right? Um, for 14 Summer Strongs, I have begged Bert to come to this show. And he said, dude, the only way you can come to this show, you've got to have a really good beard and you've got to have really long hair. And I said, dude, but my kids, they're going to hate it. They don't, they're not going to like that stuff. And he said, no, you got to do it. So finally, I've done it, and I'm here, right? <laughs> and uh, now that, that was supposed to start off, you know, as a joke. But today, guys, I have a, I don't know, I think a unique set of skills to get people excited. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Today, I want you to leave, you know, leave better than before I met you. And I think that's what coaching is all about. So if you see... Uh, the title up there, I'm calling it Magic Today. Magic, right? Which is, uh, I think that's what coaching is, and I'm gonna try to convince you of that. Now, I will say this, that was a joke of what you're thinking, but I do know what you were thinking when you really walked in here. There was one question that I believe everybody asked themselves when they walked in here. First time I ever walked in here, I'd never been here before. I saw all that stuff on the floor. I saw, I came in here and people were moving huge weights. And you know what the question was that I asked myself? I said, am I strong enough? Am I strong enough to be here? Am I strong enough to speak in front of these guys? Am I strong enough to do that grip thing outside? Am I strong enough uh, when my company that took me 20 years to build is falling apart and I'm forced and I can't do anything about it? Am I strong enough every time I got to get on a plane to go fire somebody up and my kids are crying at the door? Am I strong enough? And uh, the cool news is the answer that I am only allowed to give myself is yes. And uh, today I'm going to make sure that that's the only answer you give yourselves to because everybody here is strong enough, right? And it's interesting. Look at, man, we got, this is a very unique thing. Uh, hey, we got weightlifters. We got Highland Games people I met. We got military. We got strong men. We got, you know, Bill benching like all the weights in this place. And, uh, but again, it's really unique that today I'm going to teach you how to be stronger and you don't have to lift a thing. You don't have to lift a weight at all. And actually, if you learn what I'm about to teach you, you're going to do the most important job. And, uh, and I'm going to try to make you make this leap today. It's not how strong you are. It's how strong you can make somebody else. And until you do that, you're an athlete. Until you do that, you're a strong man. Until you do that, then you're a coach. So uh, today, I've got material that I've never used before. And, uh, and I'm challenging myself with it. And I, I think everybody's going to appreciate it by the end right? So did everybody see the, 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 guys, have you seen this museum, if you will? 
I walked in, there's all this stuff getting picked up off the floor. It was in crazy, you know, I didn't know what you're allowed to touch or what you're not allowed to touch. Guys, there were guys in the bathroom deadlifting the toilet out of the floor, <laughs> which you should go get that checked, right? But uh, I wanted to start off when I walked around and I sat up there and I was taking pictures of the books and I saw that strongman stuff that's up in that case. I thought about history, right? History, roots and history. That's a lot of what this place is about. And uh, so I wanted to do a historical strongman story. So would you guys like to hear a story? Yeah. Is this an English-speaking audience? Yeah. Would you guys like to hear a story? Because yeah. I've never told it before, but hey, anybody ever been to the circus when they used to have circuses? Well, see, guys, the circus is a really old thing. And yeah, you got the trapeze, you got the elephants, but see, there was the sideshow. There was the sideshow. And man, the sideshow had it all. It had the rubber man. It had the bearded lady. It had, you know, people doing different tricks. It had the guy charming snakes, but it had the strong man. And everybody wanted to see the strong man, but there was one in particular that everybody wanted to see. People would go around the world to see him. And it was because he had a challenge. Just like we're going to see a challenge outside today. Outside his tent on the wall, it said $10,000 challenge. Come inside. So, man, people are flocking inside, flocking inside, flocking inside. And first he starts the show. He bends the horseshoe. He lifts the anvil. He's tearing phone books in half. And he says, but I know what you've come here for today. I know why you're here. You want to know what the $10,000 challenge is, right? Would you guys like to know what the $10,000 challenge is? Yes. So what he does around all the equipment, all the equipment is there, right? And, uh, Good plug for Black Rifle Coffee right here if you like it. And these knives. This strong man, humongous guy, he says, I'm going to do the ultimate test of strength. And he walks out with a lemon. People are confused. They don't know what he's doing. And he cuts this lemon, right? And he says, guys, I want everybody to watch right now, but I need your energy a little bit. I need your, your energy, a little bit of fire. So I'm going to ask you for that now. So guys, I need your energy. Fire me up. I'm about to do something. Give me something. Ah! Okay. So he squeezes this lemon. Sorry for getting lemon juice on the floor. And man, he squeezed it with all his might. This guy's grip strength was legendary. And he said, now, I'm going to need it even more. And this guy gets the eye of the tiger, and he starts grunting, and he starts working himself up. He's going crazy, and he, go, and he needs it from the crowd again. So give it to me again. Yeah. And he goes, ah! And he gets like four more drops. And then he says, here's the $10,000 challenge. Anybody that can come up here from the crowd right now and squeeze one more drop out of that lemon, and I will give you $10,000. He said, but I got to warn you, see, uh, I have done this in 30 countries around the world. Tens of thousands of people have tried, the strongest people in the world, and no one, no one has ever gotten one more drop out of that lemon. So who's first? And man, the, this man mountain of a guy comes up, and he grabs the lemon, ah, nothing. Next guy comes up, ah, world-class thrower, ah, super professional athlete, ah, nobody can get another drop. Strong man feels like his 10 grand is safe once again. And from the back of the room, somebody shouts out and says, hey, can I try that? It's this little old lady. She says, can I try that? And the crowd parts and she comes walking up and people think it's part of the show. It's not part of the show, but they think it's great. So now this old lady gets up there. She goes, how does this work? He goes, you just got to get one more drop out of this lemon. You get $10,000. She goes, is that it? Is that all I got to do? So she takes that lemon, and now the crowd, because they're kind of into this, they don't know what's going to happen. They start going crazy again. They start going crazy again. Ah! She gives all she's got. No drop. And then she says, can I try one more time? And they say yes, and now, now she gets the eye of the tiger. And she starts grunting, and she starts going crazy. Ah! And it doesn't just get one more drop, it gets two drops, it gets three drops, and guys, everybody is stunned. And the person that is most stunned is the strong man. And he's happy to give the money away, but he says, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you, how did you just do that? How did you do that? It's incredible, I need to know the secret. No one has ever done that before. What is the secret? And you know what she said? She said, sir, 
when you have a granddaughter that you love more than anything in the world, and she's in the hospital, and she needs a surgery that costs $10,000 to save her life, squeezing a drop out of a lemon's not that hard anymore. She said, if you got a strong enough why, you will figure out a strong enough how. Everybody hear that one? Because I made that up like last night, getting ready for this speech. (laughs) If you got a strong enough why, not just a why. Everybody's like, oh, what's your why? What's your why? No, what's your strong why, man? That word is in our face everywhere. Are you strong enough? Today I'm going to convince you of that, but you will only be strong enough if you got a really strong why. And you know what? Most people I meet, they don't even know what it is. And then they complain about the thing that they don't have. And why? Because they could never figure out how to get it. So today, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, um, hey, did you guys like that story? Yeah. First time I ever told it and uh, made a little mess there or two. So, uh, are you guys lemon squeezers? Yeah. Meaning, no, you are lemon squeezers. <laughs> we just went through the hardest year and something of our lives, and you guys are here. There's a whole lot of people that didn't squeeze the lemon, man. A whole lot of people that probably shoulda, woulda, coulda, was gonna come here, the gonna do's, but you did it. And I'm just gonna ask you to go a little bit further with some of the stuff you learn today. But make no mistake, you're a lemon squeezer. You can do it, you just gotta figure out what that why is. So hey, I'm all for, man, you better be lifting some weights here today. You better be having some of that IPA beer tonight if that floats your boat. But man, if you go to bed tonight and you're not spending a little bit of time thinking about what drives you, and why you should be strong enough for everybody else, you don't get it, right? And then you'll be back here next year still trying to figure it out. That was one big idea. Strong enough why, figure out how. Hey, I've sat in the back the whole time always watching. I'm gonna give you guys a little coaching right now. A sensei, uh, guys, I'm also a judo black belt that had a big profound effect on my life. And uh, he would always say this. He'd say, always have a pen and paper around. Or you could use your phone. And he would say, because man, if you hear something great, you better write it down. Because your mind may forget, but the paper will always remember. I'm going to give you a little hint right here. That would be a cool thing to write down. (laughs) You know why? Because someday you're going to be working with somebody. You're going to help them out. You're going to say, you should have a pen. Because your mind will forget, but the paper will always remember. And then you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, my coach is a genius. But if you don't write some of the stuff down, if you don't go away with the stuff, you won't get it. So I'm going to try sometimes if I say something I think you should really know, which took me like 25 years of pain and suffering to figure out, I want to make sure you get it, right? So that was one big idea. I got a lot of them for you, but uh, here's my strong why. I'll use the Emerson quote first. This is my strong why. It's why I'm here, why I'm strong enough to stand up in front of you and talk about this. Look at that quote. Our chief want is someone who will inspire us to be what we know we could be. I'm going to paraphrase for Emerson, which is a big thing. You know what that, you know what, if I was going to give the short version of that, you know what it is? Everybody wants a coach, man. Everybody wants a coach. You know, that coach that comes in, veins in their neck, man, gives you everything they got and just does, like makes your life and your dreams come true. And I'm going to challenge you today, instead of waiting around for that person to show up in your life, go be that person for somebody else. It's the biggest reward in the world. Right, coach? Told you. Now, I'm here to convince you, whether you call yourself that or not, you are a coach. So you might not identify with that. You might say, I'm a strong man. I'm a trainer. I'm a pro this. I'm a that. I'm a parent. No, you're a coach. And right now, if you didn't notice from the last year and a half, the world needs better coaches. The world is missing coaches right now. And hey, universities aren't really actually pumping them out. Uh, Hey guys, I have three degrees and I never had one day on coaching. Right? Like, I don't know. So today, but I'm going to make sure you understand it. Because until you call yourself that, you're not going to try to figure out how to do that. Right? Now, I know what you're saying, though, because I heard this a lot. Guys, I'm going to tell you this one, too. And some of this, whether it's 
tough love, love tough, because a coach has to give it. I'm hearing a lot of this, like, oh, this industry, I don't get credit. Oh, the hours I work, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. Hey, uh, newsflash, if you're grinding, you're in the wrong career. I've been, I never grind. I love what I do, because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? And uh, if you're not getting enough credit, you got the wrong job. It's not about pats on the back. A coach gives them. And hey, I made those mistakes. I wanted to see how strong I was. I wanted to show my stuff off. I had to get slapped in the mouth a lot from kids, thousands of them, until, they finally, until I finally got it. They were like, don't you want to hear about me, coach? I don't want to hear about you. And then I got it. Unsung hero? That's the job. And uh, we're going to do our first exercise in a second. Or you're going to do this after. It's going to be really powerful, and I can't wait to talk to everybody after. Uh, hey, right now I want you to think of the person that is the person that you're here now because of, that, that person that taught you about strength, that person that took you the first time into the weight room, that person that changed your life. Does everybody have one of those people? Yeah. Hey, have you called them lately and told them that? No. Nah. So they stay the unsung hero and they're still pissed. So here's my challenge. After this ends, go outside before you start doing something else and call that coach up and say, hey coach, you changed my life. Hey coach, you saved my life. Thank you. And then just wait, because I guarantee, if you haven't talked to him in a while, you know what's gonna happen? You know what they're gonna say first? They're gonna say, is everything okay? Are you drunk? Right, and if they say that, you're not telling people enough about it. And uh, so I'm challenging you because I do it every time. See, I get the opportunity to speak and it allows me to do that. Hey guys, right there, I'm, uh, I'm 16 years old. I just won a big meet, big meet. And because uh, back in the 1980s, he didn't take pictures much. I cherish this picture. The real one, my mom had to fit the entire 11 foot javelin into the shot. <laughs> but uh, that guy's my coach. It's the only word I ever called him, but I want to tell you how he found me. Mark Rooney did all this stuff, all those things you just heard. You didn't hear about overweight little Martin Rooney that felt lousy about himself. And uh, man, sports was his only outlet. And then I go to this baseball trial because we had junior high, seven, eight, nine. And it was seventh grade, and they made an announcement because baseball was my life. I thought I was going to be a baseball player. And uh, they st had everybody stand up. They said, all seventh graders, stand up. They said, sorry, guys, we have so many people. No one's making the team. There's the door. That was great coaching, right? I'm like, oh, no, no sports, no nothing. Now what? I got nothing. And I'm walking out this door, and here's this roly-poly guy. And the first kid that walks out, he goes, hey, kid, I heard there's no baseball, but you look perfect for track. That kid looks at this creep, you know, just keeps walking. Next guy comes out. Hey, kid, I heard there's no baseball this year, but you look perfect for track. That kid keeps walking. And the next kid, and the next kid, and the next kid, and the next kid, and then I walked out. Guess what he said? <laughs> just guess. He said, hey, kid, I heard there's no baseball, but you look perfect for track. And if there was anything, any word in the world that I did not feel like in anything at that moment in time, it was perfect. So I looked up and I said the only thing I could think to say, you know what I said? I said, track? He goes, yeah, yeah. I said, what's that? I didn't, I didn't even know what it was. And he talked about running and he could see he was losing me, then jumping. And he goes, we throw stuff. And I said, you throw stuff? He goes, oh yeah. <laughs> throw all kinds of stuff. Got this heavy stuff, but man, we got a spear. I said, a spear? He goes, oh yeah. It's like an ancient Greek warrior out on the, on the fields of battle. It's javelin. He says, you gotta come out for javelin. You'll be perfect for track. Next day, I went out for track. That's six years later, the kid that wasn't gonna go to college, the kid that was feeling lousy about himself, the kid that didn't know how to sleep, didn't know how to eat, didn't have any self-esteem, it changed my life, it saved my life. Every day, he poured everything he had into me. 
and, uh, and it's really cool. You know how I repaid him? I won. That's all I could give him. So I'm going to be great. I'm not going to let him down. And to this day, I still won't. Because guys, we talk every day. Because now I'm a track coach, right? And I call him before every meet, nervous. So he didn't light a fire under me. I'm, I'm gonna give you guys that one to think about. He didn't tell me you should go out for track and now you're gonna do this workout and you suck and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. No, he lit a fire inside of me. He said, man, this thing is incredible and you're perfect for that. You can do this, let's go. And man, that fire has never gone out. And every one of you has the ability to do that. Every one of you. And actually today, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Right? I, until I had to give this speech, I never understood it. Like, guys, you heard all the accolades and the results, but now I'm going to show you how I did it. Now I understand. And, uh, and it might be different than you think. So that's us now, well, at least pre-COVID. We talk all the time, but here's the thing. Hey, think about right now, who's the strongest person you know? Think about who it is. Could be somebody in here. But I don't think about anybody in here. You know who the strongest guy is I know? You know who he is? He's that guy right there. And not because he had a 400-pound bench, which he did. He's the strongest guy I know because he could stand outside a doorway and people walked out that he didn't even know and he had the courage to tell them they looked perfect. Are you strong enough for that? Because I'm still working on it. You tell your kids that little nugget or your spouse? Nah, we worry about other stuff, right? So we'll start there, right? This isn't even the magic yet, but I'm challenging you, right? Strength is just not how much stuff you can rip off the floor, right? It's strength also has to do with what you can light inside of someone else. And uh, the end of your days, I'll let you know this one too, you will be measured by that because the strength, it will go away, but the one I'm talking about never leaves you, ever. Something he taught me. I said, coach, what is your secret? Because we talk a lot. Do you know uh, that I never learned this in school? No one ever taught me that. No one ever said, uh, hey, do you know that if you want to be a coach, motivation is one of your main responsibilities. Do you know what I learned? I learned the Krebs cycle. How's that, how's that one working for you? That's what I learned. Now, you might say, oh, that Martin Rooney. Oh, he's all rah-rah. Yeah, he's all motivation. Man, if you think motivation is negative, you're negative. And negative never works. You don't grow anything in a negative environment, ever. So today, I'm gonna tell you a lot of things. I am challenging you, and here's a challenge that was given to me by a mentor of mine. Um, before you come up with all the reasons it can't work, because I'm going to be speaking, and you're going to say, ah, oh, that can't work, and I can't get that with that guy, and this won't go, and that won't work. Before you think of all the reasons it can't work, I want you to think up some how it can. Because you will never grow if all you say is no. Somebody should write that down, it rhymes. You will never grow if all you say is no. And you know what? Most people say no first. Hey, guys, I'm going to tell you all these secrets. Nah, that won't work. Hey, guys, motivation is one of your responsibilities. Nah, that's not me. Because, guys, what are you here for, right? If you don't try some of this stuff, then you stay exactly the same. And uh, actually, you're one day older and not any stronger. So here's an interesting thing that happened with my coach. I got my first degree. And I got my second degree. I got my third degree. Um, yeah, I'm also an orthopedic therapist. Um, man, I really thought I knew what I was doing. And I would come back and I would talk with my coach. We would always still get together. And you know what I realized? He doesn't know that much. I was like, I'd be talking about biomechanics. I'm talking about the Krebs cycle. He, didn't, he had no idea what I was talking about. And I started to resent him. I started to think like I'm smarter than him. He held me back. He could have gave me more if he would have known all this stuff. And then I became a coach, and I realized he's a genius. And all the things that I'm going to teach you today are the things he did great. I'm just trying to be great at him, right? 
But uh, when I started, man, I was doing a lot of NFL Combine stuff. I was one of the original UFC guys. But man, I thought I was so smart. But my results actually didn't improve. But I, but I was having this battle, right? I was having this battle. And here's what the battle I call it. Heart versus smart. Heart versus smart. It's like, man, you heard it today. Hey, Luke's presentation was awesome, right? Guy was on fire. That was all heart, right? And uh, man, I started to add more heart and add more heart. And I started to add more heart. And as the heart got, not more than the smart, but as I added more heart to my smart, my results went crazier and crazier and crazier. And uh, this is the conclusion. Guys, it's only four words, but this might be one of the most powerful things you hear this weekend, if I can tell you. You ready? Because I remember sitting up in my bed at night, exploding out of bed and realizing this and writing this down. Training is not coaching. Anybody ever tell you that? Training is not coaching. Wait, you, you can write up a great program? That's not coaching. Wait, you understand the deadlift? You just ate a new superfood from the Amazon. That's not coaching. It has nothing to do with it. Now, let me explain before we go further. But I didn't just say, don't say, hey, Martin Rooney says training doesn't matter. No, dude, I love geeking out on the science. Guys, I read, I will outread, I don't know about everybody in here, but man, I, I am trying to. I didn't say it's not important. I'm going to say a word to you now, just so you get it, right? And again, this is the wisdom coming down now after 30 years. Um, training isn't coaching. Do you know what training is? It's compulsory. That means you have to know it. Wait, if you're a strength coach, you, you don't know the deadlift. You're a strength coach. You don't know the plyo stuff. You're a strength coach. You don't understand speed. Like that's compulsory. You have to know that to call yourself that. Does, there, does everybody get where I'm going? But there's another side. So you got to understand it, but there's another side, like the dark side of it where, hey, the dark side of the moon exists even though you can't see it. And uh, training is the action. Coaching is getting them to do the action. Does everybody get that? Guys, that's a big statement. That, that, that is huge. Right? If you know a lot about training and you can't get anyone to do it, it doesn't matter how much you know. Right? And uh, I use this one a lot. So I, with a show of hands, you ready? Just to make this aware for everybody. I'm a, a big thing on broccoli. It's like I, I keyed off on broccoli and I try to get everybody to eat broccoli. And they had it last night, which was awesome. So how many people here think broccoli is healthy? Right? That, that news has made it to South Carolina, right? <laughs> um, hey, how many people eat it sometimes? How many had it last night? Now, the big question. How many of you in here, every person you work with, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's every athlete you train, a person you coach, before you trained them or know them or anything, they didn't eat broccoli, but because of you, now they eat broccoli. And I, all of them. I just showed you the division between training and coaching. You come to my house, you're eating broccoli. <laughs> How many hours of sleep you need a night? Eight. It's eight. It's not four. <laughs> nah, it's not four. How many people get eight every night? Oh, wait, whoa, well, you don't even do it? Then I know your people aren't doing it. We're going to talk about how, how that works. But then the other part would be, how many people here, every person you work with, they get eight hours of sleep? See, don't tell me how you can't do it. I will come to your house and read you a bedtime story and put you in your bed. <laughs> that's, that's how I coach. So, like, figure out how you can do it, right? So, a coach, and these are like these definitions that it took a long time. It's all, I'll show you guys this book later, but like everything is in there. Guys, a coach takes somebody from no one to doing. Oh, why I wanted to say that. Do you know, hey, is broccoli healthy? Yes. Everybody knows that. My, uh, you know, a four-year-old knows that, right? Is fast food good for you? No. Everybody knows that. So who cares if you know that or not? Everybody knows that. You don't have to know that much. Can you get somebody to do it? Coach? Right? 
Like guys, that's my, man, it's the most honorable word in the world that you can be called. When somebody calls you coach, they give you the reins to their life and they're gonna listen to what you say. You probably don't remember stuff your teacher said. You probably don't remember stuff that you learned from your doctor. But man, when it was your coach, whatever that person said was law. And, it, and man, 30, 40 years later, it's a magic word. And like, man, then you better respect it if you're gonna put it on your back in big capitalized letters, coach. So today, I said it's a magic word. I'm gonna show you, share with you five magic skills. Five magic skills, I'm gonna try to entertain you while we do it, but every one of these is for you. You need to practice it, you need to challenge yourself, you need to do these. And I'm promising you, this is how I did it. Hey, fastest guys at the combines all these years in a row. UFC champions, you heard that. Super Bowl team right? Uh, what would be other ones? Oh, but see the ones I love talking about. Hey, uh, USA Today, number one in the nation high school football team. But the one I love the most was the public school that we won 55 straight, six years, no loss. I'm going to show you how I did that, right? And I'm not saying those things to impress you. I'm saying them to impress upon you. It works. Nobody does it. Skill number one, magic. I call it magic. So describe the magic first. Let's go back. Why I use the magic idea. Hey, you see all that equipment? That, that, again, we talked about all the stuff that's on the floor. What is the force that we're trying to fight against to pull one of those things off the floor? Gravity. Gravity. Can you see it? You believe it's real, right? Can you explain it? hard though if you got into the math of that just watch before you say sure we'll, we'll talk later on gravity um but it's there and it makes incredible things happen actually we would none of us would have a job if it didn't exist so i'm just asking you to make the leap that there are other things like that too right before you discount them because every one of the things i'm about to talk about is as invisible as gravity but i'm telling you it's real and if you use it wisely, someday you will have the honor of someday somebody's going to be at a seminar just like this and they're going to call you up and they're going to say, coach, you saved my life, you changed my life. So skill number one, how many people flew here? All right. So, uh, man, guys, uh, you know, me and coach were talking about that. And, uh, and an aside, one of the biggest things that I got from his presentation, um, uh, before COVID hit, guys, I was on a plane every week. 150,000 miles a year, 150, 200 days away from home. Just as an aside, because I told you I was going to throw it in. Hey, guys, I missed a lot of stuff too. It is not a badge of honor to say how much stuff you missed. It's not a badge of honor to say how much you grind, how early you go in, and how much stuff you missed. Figure it out. Figure out how to not miss all the stuff. I wish I had not done that, right? But it's where I learned this next story, planes. There's this guy, seasoned traveler, 150,000 miles a year, and he's on this plane. And hey, has anybody ever been on a plane where it's, man, turbulence is going? You know, the one where the captain goes, uh, psh, uh, everybody, please get to your jump seats. <laughs> like, when they say that, grab on. Well, this happens. They say it. The plane is jumping. The plane is jumping. People are saying prayers. People are mumbling under their breath. People are ordering more drinks. And this seasoned traveler, he looks over, and while everyone else is panicking, there's this little kid, this little kid sitting there. She's got her iPad and man, the plane would jump and pound and she would take like a deep breath, but then she would just smile again and go back to her game and the plane would jump and pound and she would do it again. And this guy was impressed. He says, look at this kid, the composure. It's unbelievable. I can't believe what this kid is doing right here. Uh, when this plane lands, I got to ask this kid how she did it. So the plane lands, and an interesting thing when you're on those flights, because I've been on a lot of them. Do you know what people do when a plane lands after a flight like that? Wow. They clap, and then they run off the plane. <laughs> it's like, dude, guys, guys, it's safe now. We're, now we're okay. Well, everybody's running off the plane, running off the plane, but he stays, and he notices she doesn't get off. And running off the plane, running off the plane until it's just them left. And now the kid unbuckles, she stands up, and he says, hey, Holy cow, I just watched you, what you just did, how, how calm you stayed. That was incredible. Can, can you tell me how you did that? What's your secret? 
And she said, uh, sir, there's no secret. My dad is the pilot, and he told me he's taking me home. So I trust him. First magic thing. We, we've been hinting about it. Luke did it. Everybody's doing it. Um, guys, the first thing you build into your program is not your plyos. The first thing you build into your program is not when to take arginine or how to spell it. <laughs> first thing you build into your program is trust or none of those things matter. You can't give people supplements and they don't know you. Can you imagine? Hey, dude, you don't know me. Hey, here, take this. Drink this. Right? Nah. So, guys, the first one, and I'll challenge everybody. Hey, how many people have some books on, like, strength training, stuff like that? Right? How many books have you read about how to develop great trust with people? And behavior modification? Yeah, none. So then don't get upset when it doesn't happen. So I'm trying to show you there's a blue ocean of all this other cool stuff that you really need to learn, right? Now, this is a bold statement right there. So you got to create trust before you can create action. Got to create trust before you create action. Now, I don't have enough time to come up with all the things I do or to show you all the things, but I'm setting you on the path. See, that's a big word right there. Do my people trust me? You ever heard this one? You ever heard this one? Man, that coach, he's great. They'll run through a brick wall for him. You heard that one? You know what that means? It means they even know it's the wrong thing to do, but they trust him so much they're going to still try. Right? So, man, if you don't have a lot of people that will run through brick walls for you, you have to figure out how to do that first. Right? And uh, so what am I saying here? You don't get to coach it. What I learned in judo was pretty interesting. Hey, guys, do you know why you bow in judo? Do you know why you bow in judo? Right? Like, I'll give you this lesson I got from an Olympic medalist that was my coach. He's not alive anymore. I used to be like, you know, American style. Man, I'm going to tear this guy's head off. And I would come in like that and go, man, this dude spiked me on my head, put his knee in my chest, and was pretty much choking me to death. 300 pounds, like 6'6", six, six, Yugoslavian silver medalist. And he said, do you know why we bow? He said, do you know how you should bow? He said, you should bow like that guy over there is the doctor that invented the medicine that just saved your kid's life. And I was like, uh, yes, sensei. <laughs> and he said, uh, and why we do that is because you can't do judo if there's nobody else. Can't do judo by yourself. It's their other thing. It's mutual respect. And uh, guys, can't be a coach if there's no people. And then you hate them. And they piss you off? You're angry at them? I heard a lot of that today. Guys, I've been coaching a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of teams. I don't got a lot of those people. So, like, maybe we go like this and make sure we're setting it up the right way first. Right? So, guys, coaching's about relationships, and you got to be building them. We heard that today, though. That is a theme, and I want to make sure that you guys chase that a little bit when we're out of here. This event is about relationships. Strong Roots is about relationships. It's like, I knew this guy, that then they knew this guy that changed my life and did that guy. Keep the chain going. So does everybody understand? First magic ingredient, trust. Don't have that, can't have anything else. Does everybody get it? Right, like, because it's going to be up to you of how you chase that down. Now, that being said, so then how do you improve it? So how can I strengthen trust? Each thing's going to build on the next one, and I think it's going to be really cool. And this is actually really, really cool. Um, people ask me a lot. They say, who's your favorite athlete in the whole world? Who's the best athlete you ever worked with? Who's your favorite? I could say Frankie Edgar. It was really cool when he won that title. I could say Jim Miller. He has the most fights in UFC history. I could say those Giants guys, they won that Super Bowl. Some of these combine guys helped put me on the map. But... Uh, my favorite athlete in the world is the athlete that I've trained the longest. And I have poured more into this athlete than any other athlete. Uh, that athlete is my daughter. If anybody wants to look on my Instagram, you'll see what she's about. It's my pride and joy. It is my ultimate, uh, you know, I, l l just example of all the things that I get up and talk about in front of people. You think, hey, oh, oh by the way, you think training pro athletes is hard? 
That's a joke. They're motivated like crazy. Training your 15, 16, 17-year-old daughter when she thinks you're an idiot? <laughs> that one's hard. Uh, her last meet, state championships, was she's track and field. Last meet was uh, last week. And, uh, you know, and it's really cool because I keep, you know, telling Kyle, I keep bringing it up because that's what's going to be this story. Guys, she's going she's gonna to run track at, at University of Notre Dame. It was my kid's dream. And do you know what I realized? As a parent or a coach, you are obligated to do everything in your power to help that person make their dream come true. So these last year and a half has been like the worst year for me, but it was also the best because I got to give everything I got to the person that actually means the most, right? And so again, I just want to show that one. It'd be easy for me to say all these other things that I did. Uh, you know, so this would be a good one, coach. This is a good one. If I told you all the great stuff and all the people I helped, oh, oh by the way, uh, the NFL guys alone that I had, it's over a billion dollars in contract money. I wish I would have tried to get a percent. But if I would have done all those things and my kid would have failed and her dreams wouldn't have come true, I would have failed. And I would trade them all, all of it, for what just happened for her, right? So I want you to know that now so that you don't make the same mistakes I have. So Notre Dame story, does anybody know who that is? If you're a coach, you should know who that is, especially if you're in football. That's Newt Rockney. Coach got it. Winningest uh, college football coach in history. University of Notre Dame. And guys, I don't know if you know this, uh, he put college football on the map, invented uniforms, invented traveling. Read up on him, because that's what I did. I read about 10 books from the 1920s over the last bunch of months, just getting myself prepared when I keep making a joke with Kyle, I'm going to be at Notre Dame like all the time, right? And uh, this story really stuck with me, and I'm going to show you magic trick number two. First one is trust, but now it's how do you make that happen. Everybody knows Notre Dame and Newt Rockney for football, but they don't know Newt Rockney. Hey, guys, besides football, he played football at Notre Dame. He was the, in the first game, they used the forward pass. He was the receiver. But what's really cool a lot of people don't know is he was on the track team, and he actually had the school record in the pole vault. Do you know that, Bert? Nobody knows that. I think that's really cool. But what was really cool about him is when he was on campus, he would walk around in his three-piece suit. And when he walked around on campus, man, they would be like, people would be on their toes. They're like, that's Newt Rockney, living legend. That's Newt Rockney, more famous than the president. And what was really cool is he wasn't just about his sport. He was about all the sports. So he would go to everything. And one day he finds himself at the track. And he's at the track and they're having a meet and they make an announcement. They yell it out and they said, hey guys, guys, O'Reilly is going for the school record in the pole vault. And Newt Rockney's in the crowd and they're watching this and he's like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I used to have that record. This kid's going to go for it. And now he puts his coaching hat on and he starts to watch. And O'Reilly, it's getting cold. If you know anything about pole vault, it's getting long. He's had some misses. And man, his body language, which we heard about today, he's just kind of like this. And Newt Rockney is watching this and he realizes, oh my gosh, this guy, he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. He, 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 this isn't going to happen. And Newt Rockney's looking around. No one else sees this, but he sees what's happening. And the coach that he is, he can't not do something. So before O'Reilly takes his last attempt, he stands up and he goes, yo, O'Reilly. And O'Reilly looks up, and he goes, oh my gosh, that's, that's Newt Rockney. He's talking to me. You know, he's like, looking around, he's like, he's talking to me. He goes, yo, O'Reilly. There are two people in this stadium now. There are two people in here that believe you're going to make this height. And he leaned in, and he said, and I'm one of them. He said, who's the other one supposed to be? And he pointed right at O'Reilly, and O'Reilly looked left and looked right. He goes, wait a minute, that's, that's Newt Rockney. Newt, Newt, Newt Rockney had this record. He thinks I can do it. Holy cow, then I'm going to do it. Now he's got a bounce in his step. He's running down, he's running down, he's running down, puts the pole in. New school record. What did he do for him? Do, wait, let's play it again. Did he go, yo, O'Reilly, make sure you're accelerating in the first three strides. Uh, you know, hey, we're going to change the angle from 42 degrees to 10 degrees and squeeze the glute, baby, the glute. Nah, he gave him the most important gift a coach can give somebody. One that I guarantee you don't give away enough. And it's one that I do all the time. The greatest gift you can give somebody is you can believe in them. How strong are you for that? 
Are you strong enough to do that? It's another one of my secrets. I build trust, but then how I do it is I believe in them. I say, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Remember my coach? Dude, you're perfect. You're perfect for that. And he never let off of that. He believed that from the first day. And you know what, end, what ended up happening? I was perfect for that. I believe my kid was perfect. Now she is. So this power of belief, though, I want to get it straight. Because I think coaches make a lot of mistakes. We heard it today. It's like, you're supposed to come in, believe in my program. You got to believe in me. I did all this stuff. I'm a thousand pound bencher, so you got to believe in me. Here's a little tidbit, guys. You got to believe in them first. I didn't believe in my coach first. He believed in me. He said I was perfect, and then I got to know him. I built trust, and then I believed. It's uh, the example I use, it's like a stove, right? You can't say to the stove, give me heat, stove, and then I'll put in the wood and give you the fire. And that's like what we do all the time. And uh, this is another biggie, a little Rooneyism. You also, as a coach, here's what you don't get to do. You don't get to decide how great somebody can be. I used to do that all the time too. Oh, this guy, look at his Achilles tendons. They're short, big calves, he'll slay slow. Look at this person, he'll never be nothing. Oh, that guy, yeah, he says he wants to do this, but that's ah, not gonna be possible, I'm so smart. And then some of these people would go on to do something incredible, and I realized I didn't give my best because I didn't believe. So here's the thing, I know, will this speech change everybody in here? No, but it's gonna affect somebody. So I'm gonna treat you all the same. I don't know who the diamond in here is, so I'm gonna polish everyone. It's how I do it every day. My kid got the least attention on that team this year because I know she's great and feels good about herself. I'm working on that kid that who knows what's gonna happen to them. And, uh, but it starts with what you believe. And all the things I'm talking, like guys, I, you can't see it. I had 21 four threes at the combine. I didn't get to choose who I had. I just had to believe every one of those guys was gonna do it. And then I got them to believe it. They were perfect. So how do you do it? You might say that to me now. You say, okay, trust. I got that coach. I gotta build trust. How can I start building trust? Believe in them, believe in them. And they're, like, they're gonna start to trust you. Be their advocate, right? I don't know, like, I'm every one of my kids' biggest advocate. But here's how you make your belief stronger. If you're not good at believing right now, now I'm gonna show you how to do that. Next magic trick. Here's what I call it. I say, find the hidden treasure. It's the number three magic trick. You got first one, build trust. Second one, it's this power of belief, just like gravity. You can't see it, but it's real. Using it as another example, make it, making it for you guys. Hey, I don't know if everybody's done it, but hey, when I benched, I wanted to bench 315 so bad for so long. And I could do 310 any day of the week, but if you put three chips on, I couldn't do it. And then one day I did it, and it blew right to like 390. It wasn't that I couldn't do it, I just didn't believe I could do it. As soon as I believed I could do it, you never miss again. So guys, like gravity, it's real. You just can't see it but you can give it to somebody else. So how do you do it, right? Like, so how do you improve your belief? And I call it find the hidden treasure. And now I'm gonna tell you another cool track story because I put in a lot of track ones. Uh, yeah, so I, I didn't know if I mentioned that. Or, yeah, so I'm the high school track coach too, right? In my spare time. But uh, yeah, there was no more important place that I would choose to be. But what I would do out there every day is I would try to find hidden treasure, try to find hidden treasure. And there was a story that inspired me. I'm gonna talk about this one kid first to see about the magic. There was this kid, I would always see him and I said, man, dude, you gotta go out for track. You would be perfect for track. Where'd I get that one, right? Kid finally came out for track. He thought he was a basketball player. And, uh, but basketball wasn't working out. College wasn't gonna happen. It's not from the United States. It was about to be over, and I'll tell you the story after this story. I want to see what you would do. Would you be strong enough? There was this kid in the gym in New Jersey. 
at a school called Fairleigh Dickinson. I think Division Three. This coach is walking through the gym and he looks for a second and he sees this dude go up and jump from like the foul line and tomahawk dunk. What would you do? How strong are you? Well, this dude, well, he stops. Maybe you would stop too. He stops. Now he watches his kid and his kid jumps up, you know, 360, boom, slams another one down. Guy's never seen anything like this. So he keeps watching. He says, how come I've never heard of this kid? This is like the greatest basketball player I ever saw in my life. And then he saw the guy start to dribble. And he couldn't, you know, the guy's dropping the ball. He's just not a good basketball player. But man, could he jump? So how strong are you? What would you do? Well, this dude, not knowing anybody in that game, walks right over, stops the game, grabs that guy by the arm, and drags him up to the track and field office. He runs inside. There's the coach. He goes, coach, I don't know who this guy is, but he needs to do track. And he left. Listen to this, because it's pretty nuts. Six months later, six months, his name was Franklin Jacobs. He broke the world record in the high jump. He's still to this day tied with Stephen Holm, holds the highest differential for how tall he is and how high he jumps. So he was 5'6", he jumped 7'6". Now look, everybody goes, whew, whew. no, you're missing it. Wait a minute, no, 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 it's not about him. Who's the hero of the story? Who's the hero of the story? That dude, I don't even know who his name is. He can't find out. Some dude that had the courage that was strong enough to see something, some hidden treasure inside of somebody else. And man, he had to, he was obligated to make it come out. Are you strong enough for that coach? Because everybody's got something incredible and you probably even see it and you don't do anything about it. And then the world never knows their greatness, right? But you could change all that with this magic. I call this one kind of like x-ray vision. And see, you know what that coach did better than anybody else? Look at that one. That's a Rooneyism right there. You want to be a great coach? You have to see people as they cannot yet see themselves. Guys, my kid... I can remember holding her and she was this big. And I already saw it all. I already saw what she was going to be and what she would become. Right? I could see it. And then I just kept doing the things until it came true. Guys, you have to see people for how great they could be. But we get taught to find all their flaws. Let's do this assessment. Let's do this screen. You're not this. You're not that. You're not this. Guys, I don't spend my time telling people what they're not. I spend my time telling people what they could be. And man, I don't know, it's kind of like crazy, but it just keeps working. And I'll keep challenging you before you say ah, it won't work. I'm daring you to try it because there's another Franklin Jacobs waiting somewhere and the world is going to miss him or her because you couldn't see it. And, and I'll tell you this one. And if it's your kid, you really blew it. Right? So what am I asking you to do if you were to, to, instead of hidden treasure? It would be called see potential. See potential. And maybe this is an important one for you. Because I, 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 I had this some. Like, guys, if somebody has really great potential, that doesn't make you less. There's not like a, in, a, a finite supply of a potential. So like, oh, they're going to be great. But like if, they're, if I make them great, then I don't look so great. Or, oh, but maybe they would be stronger than me someday. That's what you want to happen. Like my strength numbers, all those things that I measure myself by, they're going like this now. I'm getting older. It's going away. I mean, it's not about that anymore. I want to see what I can do with everybody else. I want them to be better than me. I would tell my kid that all the time. You did more than me. You're, like, you're way better than I am. I'm challenging you for that. Then you're a coach. But if it's about you, you're still an athlete, right? And then this will never come out. So seeing potential, right? And, and man, maybe it's writing that down. Like, like use it as an exercise. Or, or here would be a good one. Ready? When was the last time you were at a restaurant and you sent or asked to please speak to the chef because you would like to give your compliments to the chef? When was the last time you did that? Or here's a better question. Have you ever done that? But 
How about this with a show of hands? How many people have had a bad meal though, complained about it a lot and told a lot of other people about it? How many people have had that? Right? So like, we're taught, we're like good at finding all the stuff that's not great, but then when something happens, watch this, here's the thing. So you gotta see potential. You ever heard this one before? Because I'm about to give you a magic trick number four. We're still moving. Ever, anybody ever heard this? Catch people doing things right. Catch people doing things right. Catch people doing things right. It's not enough. It's not enough. I catch people doing stuff right all the time. There's one more piece that they forgot to tell you for that one. So that's incomplete. Do you know what the last piece is? Then you've got to tell them about it. Then you've got to tell them that. I see stuff all the time, and it's like, wow, that's really cool. That's amazing. And it's like, oh, but I can't go over there and tell them that's cool. Like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll be weird. Nah, be the person that goes up, and every time you see something great, tell them about it. You might change their whole life. And let me give an example from track and field. I love this one. So that, this is the fourth one. So the fourth magic thing, it's your words. I don't know. I don't know how I did it. Guys, I never took a speaking class. I never like learned how to do stuff. There's just something about me that I'm supposed to be standing on stage and there's things that I say and I don't know whether it puts a couple of goosebumps on your arm or makes you just run a little bit faster. I've just figured out how to do it. Words are magic. They're magic. And everybody can learn to use that magic for good because words can be waved for bad too. Dark magic. So uh, listen to this. That's uh, Charlie Paddock, 1920, gold medalist in the 100 meter. When he came back to the United States, they took him on a motorcade tour and he would go to high schools around the country. And at the end of every speech, he would say, hey kids, I think somebody here, somebody here is gonna be the next 100 meter gold medalist. And he would end the show. In Cleveland, Ohio, Show ends, this kid comes walking up, and Mr. Paddock, Mr. Paddock, and he goes, hey, kid. He goes, that guy you were talking about, the next one, I think it's me. Do you know what he said? I think you're right. I think you're right, it is you. I believe it. Don't let me down, go do it. That kid, uh, maybe you know him, that was Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens, against the greatest tyranny and probably one of our most famous historic Olympiads ever, he gets those four gold medals. He comes back. Now he goes on a motorcade tour. And guys, you can't make this up. Then he goes back to his same high school. And guess what he ends his speech with? I think there's going to be somebody here. There's going to be the next gold medalist here. Motorcade's driving away, and this kid stops the car, and he pulls the glass down. And he says, Mr. Owens, Mr. Owens, I think you were talking about me. He said, I think you're right. I believe it. Don't let me down. That guy's name, it gets even cooler. That his, uh, he went and did it. That's Harrison Bones Dillard. Uh, he was a hurdler. But in the trials, he tripped and fell over the hurdles, didn't make the Olympic team for the hurdles. So he says, hey, can I still go out for the 100 meter? Makes the 100 meter, comes in third in the US, but then goes to the Olympic Games, wins a gold medal. Harrison Bones Dillard is working out a track camp in New Jersey. The kid there, jumping through the roof. And they said, uh, hey, kid, I, man, I think you're going to be the next gold medalist. I think you can do it. That was Carl Lewis, who I got to spend some really cool time with when I was on the bobsled team. And, like, man, every, like, he's one of the greatest of all time. Everybody needed somebody to believe in him. Right? That, don't, get that, uh, don't forget that one, too. It doesn't matter how great you are. You ready? I'll give you one. This is a, are you ready for a big statement? Are you ready? Are you guys enjoying this? Yeah. All right. Motivation has an expiration. Motivation has an expiration, and it's like short. Carl Lewis can't just hear you're going to be great once in 10 years. He needs to hear that every day, too. Your kids need to, everybody needs motivation. Every day. It, has, it expires really quick. Can't just do it once. Got to be nonstop. 18 years straight, right? So here's the holy grail, and I'm going to finish this, that story I started with. He'll think it's maybe neat I tell it. This is a kid. He's uh, like one of my kid's best friends at school. 
So I took a liking to him. He came from the Bahamas. He's from the Bahamas. He's staying just with people. It's not even his family. He has no car. He has no money. And I would always tell him, man, his name is Deuce. And I would say, Deuce, you got to go out for track. Come on, man, don't let me down. you got to go out for track. I think you got something. Junior year comes, and then we had one meet, and then it all got canceled. Basketball went great, but no offers. And because he's from the Bahamas, then he's going to have to go back. I said, man, come out this season. Stick with me. I know people. We could do something. We could do something. We could do something. And uh, we would train when no one else was training. And just like my coach used to do, the funniest thing is we would go, and he just really liked getting drinks after we would train. Let's go get some drinks. And uh, it was the 100-meter state final. He'd already broken the 200-meter record, which I told him he would. And guys, you want to you talk about magic? Listen to this. We're in the blocks. And you can choose as a coach to hold the blocks for somebody if you want. So man, this is it. I'm going to hold his blocks. And I'm right there because I know. I remember how scared I was. And I said, I said, I said, look at me. I said, look at me, because they're announcing it. He's scared. He's warming up. I said, right here, right here. I'm going to show you something. I got magic in here. I got magic in here. I said, man, you're going to break this record. We've been going the whole time. He kept missing the record by like a hundredth, something else, hundredth. I said, I got magic in here. Watch this. Turn around. And I started rubbing his back. I said, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're going to get this right here. You're going to get this here. Boom, right on his back. And man, now I'm holding the blocks. He takes off school record. Next week, he kept it a secret. He couldn't wait to tell everybody. But he told me first that, uh, you know, so he's going to be running track in college here in North Carolina, Queens University, and uh, everything worked out. And you know what I said in my head? Man, man, I'm glad I said that to that guy. So here's the magic, what I'm trying to say. It's the holy grail. I think it's what we shoot for as a coach. It's the holy grail, ready? And, and coach earlier, Luke, had hinted at this. I'm going to summarize it even quicker. Man, you got to get really great at saying the right thing at the right time in the right way to the right person. Man, that's like the grail. It's like, how do you say this to that? Coaching girls is different than coaching boys. And like, I, guys, I made the mistake. It'd be the relay team. I'm like, let's go, girls. This is it. Do or die. Life or death. They start crying. The guys, they're all like fired up out of their minds. It doesn't work. It's different. You know what I told them? This, it's just this little tidbit. This is what I would use when my girls were really scared. I would say, no matter what happens, no matter what happens when we go around this track right now, all those parents up in the stands and everybody else, they're all going to love you. They're going to love you just the same. Like, let's go. And man, yeah, that, like, there's just different things. Saying the right thing, right time, right way, right person. I don't have the answer for everybody, but you got to figure that out. And when you have that magic of that, when you slap somebody's back and they go and they set a school record, guys, it's the greatest moments of your whole life. And by the way, like we talked about, coach, and guys, this I'm going to give you something, a very good gift too. It doesn't matter what level you coach at. You are not measured by the team that's on your shirt or anything else. You're measured by the lives you changed and the impact that you have had on the most people. Right? And that's why I talked to coach, because he was like, oh, I'm just high school. I'm just high school, but I love high school. And we said, I said, high school is the most important thing in the whole world. There are no college guys without high school. Right? And it's, and it's hard. So I'm just giving you that, because I think a lot of people try to race up the chain, and then once they get all the way there, they realize that that wasn't really what they were after. So if you love coaching, it doesn't matter where you're coaching. Right? It doesn't matter where you're coaching. Which takes me to the final piece of magic. Final piece of magic. This one's not a secret. Um, I hope you guys, hey, do you guys think I believe in coaching? Yeah. Do you think I believe in the power of it? Yeah. Guys, so much so that I've just been in the flow that I don't even know what I said and I don't know how long I've been up here. But here's what I would say if I were to say what is my greatest secret and the one that everybody has, and again, it's magic, the word is enthusiasm. But I'm gonna teach you some important lessons about it. But watch, first one, enthusiasm. I put it in this book, uh, but what are the four last letters of enthusiasm? It's I-A-S-M. I-A-S-M. Do you know what that stands for? 
I am sold myself. I'm sold. That kid, when I smacked him in the back, I'm sold. You're breaking the record right here. I'm sold. Just now make it true. So enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is different than rah-rah. I hate even hearing that. It makes me sick. Rah-rah. No, enthusiasm. Don't you love what you do? Passion's impossible to hide. Authenticity is impossible to hide. It's magic. And if you're not doing what is for your authentic self, then go find what it is. I dare you. Because the world will be better if you do. But man, we don't need any more coaches. And we definitely don't need any more coaches that are complaining. Right? So, this is a line from my dad. And I left them out. Guys, my parents have had a tremendous impact on my life. My mom was a phys ed teacher and coach. I don't want to leave her out. She's my first coach. It's why I do get eight hours of sleep every night, because she drilled it into my head. It's also why I eat a clove of garlic with honey when I'm sick, which maybe doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but my dad would say, he would say, man, man, if you want any of these people to do this thing, kid, you got to be on fire before anybody else is going to burn. Here's the thing. Man, I love sports, love training, lifting. I love it. And like, as you get older, it starts to get taken away from you. But then you realize, holy cow, I can give it to everyone. And it gets stronger. But guys, the secret will be on how, fire, how on fire you are. I guarantee, because see, I don't know you enough, but I guarantee you've been on fire for a long time long time, but let me show you the secret. So look, first thing is you got to have it. Enthusiasm, you got to have it. Would everybody agree? Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm going to show you. See, I made a mistake for a while. It's not how just that you have it, but you have to know how to direct it. So watch this. Guys, this is, if I were to ever say, like you ever, uh, Zig Ziglar, does anybody remember Zig Ziglar? He would always give this thing and he had this signature line and the signature line was, uh, if you help enough people get what they want, you're going to get what you want. You ever heard that? Which is true. It's good. But I was always saying, what's my signature? What's my signature? What's it going to be? What's going to be the coaching signature? And it took 20 years and I figured it out. If you want to be a great coach, you have to have the magic ability to get more excited about somebody else than yourself. Did everybody hear that? If you want to be a great coach, you have to have the ability to get more excited about somebody else's life and somebody else's career than yours. See, today I'm not excited about me. Why I got so excited to present is because I've given this to you. I already did it. It's not about me. I don't care. Man, but somebody's going to get it. Something's going to happen. And see, I always use this picture, which is pretty cool. Uh, that was Jim Miller went in fight of the night. It was fight of the year. Guys, me and that guy, we've done everything together for 20 years. He has most fights in UFC history, 37 fights in the octagon. We had four of them during the pandemic. Who am I excited about in that picture? Who do you think? I'm excited about him. Because he has four kids. And it's the only way he's going to make any money. And it's like, guy's got to win, man. And uh, when I made that leap, that's when not only did the results get great, but all the other magic happened too. So are you strong enough? Yeah. You strong enough, man, to, to be so excited about somebody else? So uh, here's a challenge I have, and I hope Bert uh, agrees. Hey, guys, when somebody else is squatting today, you should, that, you should be more excited about them th than anybody else on planet Earth, right? And man, if you can get really good at that, you're going to be the most popular, successful person you know. Which brings me down to the last slide or two. So have you guys enjoyed this? Yeah. All right. Did you get something? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to need Bert for a second. This is going to be one of the first times to try this. And uh, guys, I said I wanted to uh, do this thing. We're going to see if it works. We're going to, do you want to see a magic trick? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because this is the trick that's going to put it all together. So I had said, hey, I brought a candle, but I was like, man, I don't have... I don't have a, we got knives laying around here. I, I don't have a, you know, a, a lighter. I said, do you guys have a lighter? And they said, oh yeah, Bert has a lighter. So Bert's, <laughs> which, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, and Bert's, Bert's going to stay up here with me. Now, guys, we're about to do some magic. Are you ready? All right, so look, here's what we're going to do. We are all together 
going to put this candle out. So right now, I want you to close your eyes, right? I'll just put it here so it doesn't go out. Everybody's going to close their eyes. And you know, you've heard of visualization, right? I want to show you that. It's magic. Visualization is magic. Remember, it's like, oh, it's not what happens with your brain. It's like, you know, it's true. So look, everybody right now, you got to close your eyes, though. you got to close your eyes. Don't worry about the phone. You'll, you'll get it after. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And now, in your head, I want you to see that candle going out. I want you to see that candle going out. I want you to see that candle going out. I want you to see that candle going out. Can you see that candle going out? Can you see that candle going out? All right, open your eyes. Well, it didn't work. That didn't work. All right, hang on. Well, there's visualization, right? But we heard today too, but there's affirmation too. Maybe we didn't, we didn't affirm enough. So look, close your eyes again. Close your eyes again. And now, guys, I want you to say, go out, go out, go out. I just want you to repeat it over and over and over and over and over. It's, it's not supposed to. Go out, go out, go out, go out, go out. Okay, open your eyes, open your eyes. Yeah, that didn't work either. Except it almost did go out, which was kind of freaky. Because <laughs> it was like, because it wasn't supposed to. But now watch, what I want Bert to do, Bert, I want you to put that candle out. I wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> Get that checked after. But it, no, but hey, right there. What did he do? So watch, all the stuff that I taught you today, believing in somebody, trust, seeing potential, visualization, affirmation. It's all real, but it's only real. It only works if you take some first action, if you do something about it. So I'm challenging you, and I have, you know, and hey, guys, give him a round of applause right now, too. But watch, stay there. Because before I, before I give you the final challenge, I want to say with him, guys, uh, yesterday we saw an incredible thing that they gave you. Incredible. But what I want to remind you is that as incredible as that thing is, the bigger thing that has happened, if you read that quote, is what you leave behind is not engraved in stone monuments. It's uh, woven into the lives of others. Your biggest, your biggest trophy, your biggest thing or legacy, the way that you have dropped a rock and created ripples in the pond are all these people that are here. And, uh, and guys, and I hope you understand that he has made that happen for you too. So guys, huge round of applause for Bert Soren. <laughs> All right, and last thing. Real quick, real quick. I know I'm getting a lot of applause and stuff, but this whole thing starts with Fox. This whole thing, everything he's instilled in me, and he put me in a position during my prime to do things that he taught me and the, uh, the dreams that we've had and the dreams that, I mean, he was a coach the whole time. He was coaching me in all these things and coaching me to coach other people and, and to pull people in and to share. And that's what I've always seen. So applause goes to him. All right. So last thing and then I'm done, I promise. And this will be, I want to see what, what kind of action we can take. I said you got to take a first action. Me, my actions are books. Like, guys, I, and you've noticed, I've said it today. How many books have you read on that? How many things have you done about that? Um, two years ago, I wrote this book. It's called Coach to Coach. Came out two days after we went into quarantine. Nobody was really interested in hearing about books then, which made it very, very difficult. I didn't get to get out in front of people. I didn't get to talk about it. But the people that have read it, 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 guys, it is creating a sensation. And uh, the amount of people that have read it, it's published already in a couple of different other languages. Guys, everything that I just talked about, it's all inside here. It's easy to read if you're afraid of books. Don't be. But, uh, but I would challenge everybody, if you're going to take a first step, if there's going to be one piece of action, it might be the next book you read or the next thing that you do. Now, to make the deal sweeter or something, right now it's on sale on Amazon. I don't control that, but it is. But here's the thing, if you order it and you come up to me during this day and you show me, hey man, I ordered that, I brought, uh, I created a new book that's here for this event, and if you order it, I will give you this one, so you'll have this one, and then this book will come to your house in a couple of days, and uh, what I wanted to see if we were strong enough as a group is if enough orders went in at one time, we can all watch, and on Amazon, the book will go like right to number one, and you can see how that works, and we can all somehow be part of it, but at the same time, 
like, I want you to read this book. And also, if you understand how books work, if you buy this book, I don't get any money. That goes to a publishing house, right? But, uh, but this book was the biggest labor of love, and I want, and if you know a coach, I want you to tell them about it. Because I believe it's not the be all end all, but every coach should have it on their shelves. And uh, that is, you know, so I would hope maybe everybody does that, and then you get two. So, hey, my, it's called Coach to Coach. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> so, uh, guys, in conclusion, right? Coaching's a little bit of magic. Can't see it all the time, but you'll see it at the end. And uh, the last wishes that I have for you is just like I said, I wish for the, you that you put some of this into action, but most importantly, I wish for you that someday 50 years ago, or 50 years from now, when you don't think anything that you did really mattered, somebody calls you up and says, you changed my life, you saved my life, I love you, coach. And uh, that's all I got. My name is Martin Rooney. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you.